Hi everyone, I am Dr. Rahul. In this video, I am going to discuss a treasure trove of opportunities that exist in our life, but instead of leveraging the opportunities, we often forego it. While conflict can make you feel stuck or obstructed and get the better of you, it is important to remember that resolving conflict helps us grow as individuals throughout our lives. Let's dive right into understanding the basics of conflict and its resolution. Conflicts arise when two contradictory people or ideas are in action. It is during the moment of conflict that we get a deeper understanding of our building blocks, beliefs and values. It is important to manage conflicts as conflicts can enhance our performance but up to a point. Beyond that, it adds to our stress. Broadly speaking, we feel conflicted when our learned behaviors and patterns of dealing with change do not help us anymore. And what it essentially does is that it pushes us to change in varying degrees. Let's look at the good and the bad of conflict. Conflict helps us to increase cohesion, aids personal growth and change, helps us to clarify key issues, pushes us to use innovation and creativity. While it can also lead to unresolved anger, inefficiency, wastage of resources, and if left unresolved, it can also threaten our psychological well-being. Conflict can be categorized into one of the four types, intrapersonal and interpersonal when individuals are involved, and intragroup and intergroup when groups are involved. Intrapersonal conflict is the conflict within one's own self. It can be by far the most stressful of all the conflicts and if the person has not developed a modus operandi of dealing with the inner stress, it can lead to depression as well. Lack of clarity and perceived inability to do something can fuel this. It helps to go back to the basics and initiating positive changes. Individual counseling comes in handy to deal with some cases of this type of conflict. Interpersonal conflicts occur when our ideas and opinions are opposed to others and interestingly, the same attributes also aid our growth and relationship. When the two individuals in an interpersonal conflict are open to adjusting and accommodating, both of them can benefit more than they could have individually. Sometimes mediator can also play a helpful role. Conflict within a group can be detrimental to the group's efficiency and if allowed to fester, it can lead to breaking up of the group. Intervention by a group's leader can often bring about a peaceful resolution and can lessen the damage to the group's productivity. Intergroup conflicts can be long-lasting. There is always a rigid perception of contradictory goals or interests in relation to the other group. Long-term solution has to start with an effort on the part of both the groups to end perceived incompatibility and needs to be followed up by efforts to increase mutual trust, acceptance and cooperation. Conflict resolution requires initiative along with various interpersonal skills and ability. Communication is often the stepping stone. Most conflicts wouldn't even arise if there is a good communication in the first place. Here are a few skills that can come in handy for conflict resolution. Orientation skills, which means understanding our own values and beliefs and our stance on justice and respect for others. Perception skills, understanding that conflict lies in perception and not the objective reality. Critical thinking skills, emotional skills, ability to handle strong emotions and being able to empathize, communication skills for effective exchange of facts and feelings, and creative thinking skills. Conflict resolution techniques have two characteristics. First is how much do we get what we want and the second is how much do they get what they want. Selecting these techniques to resolve conflicts involve meditating on these two characteristics. There are five conflict resolution techniques. First is avoiding. Here, none of the conflicting individuals get what they want. Avoiding is a perfect way to handle some disputes if they are so small that you really don't care that much. Avoidance is the perfect strategy when someone cuts you off on the highway. Careful though, if either of you in the conflict really do care then avoidance may make the conflict worse or you will have another conflict to deal with soon. The next technique is accommodating or giving in when you feel that it is more important for the other person than it is for you. Trouble is when we accommodate and it is the wrong technique. We feel like we had to give in. Then we could move to the victim corner which can be so very toxic. The next technique is dominating or competing. It is the opposite of accommodating. Here one person pressures the other to get what they want. It's only useful in an emergency or battlefield like situations. When used in a non-emergency situation, it's called bullying. It's just distasteful. The next technique is compromising. It is when both the parties get some of what they want and forego something else. Think of it like a tie. 
this is the fastest way to resolve a conflict. While compromising can settle a dispute, it cannot bring long-term alignment. If emotions are high and everyone is deeply committed to their position, compromising is not the best solution. Compromising constitutes of mediation and arbitration. The next technique is collaborating. Collaborating is the only way to create a win-win outcome. It requires time, patience and a lot of willingness. It requires excellent listening skills. Everyone feels seen, heard and valued. Collaboration is a creative process which can open up entirely new possibilities. And the good news is that it is actually possible in 80% of the conflicts. I hope this video helped you in understanding conflict and equipped you to handle your conflicts better. Thank you.